So this gentleman came to see me 20 years ago. He became a personal friend, followed us around. We went back and forth. He was a team leader, started many, many offices in Miami, very, very successful, and he'll tell you a little bit of his history. But my dear friend, Kevin Cottrell. Thank you, Gene. So the theme I want you to think about is how bad do you want it? And that's sort of the theme of my life. Don and I met, and uh, what was interesting is I loved his tenacity, too. He was going to do the impossible, be the biggest owner at Keller Williams. My story goes back, and I won't take too long on this, all the way to when I was 18 years old. At that point, I thought I was going to be a doctor. So I became a paramedic and a rescue swimmer. Why did I do that? I had to get something to differentiate myself to get into Northwestern or an Ivy League school and then go to medical school. I had 37 saves, CHP commendations, and actually got the U.S. Coast Guard to partner with the sheriff's office that I was a rescue swimmer at in California. With a non-qualifying GPA, non-qualifying SATs, I got into Northwestern. How bad do you want it? I got there, and I was out of my league. My dad said one thing to me. He goes, this is ridiculously expensive. You only have four years, and your grade point average has got to be above 3.7, or I'm going to stop paying for it. I had to study my ass off. My roommates were like, what's wrong with you? All you do is go to the library and study, and you're in study groups. And I graduated on the dean's list. I didn't go to medical school. I did my next, how bad do you want it? My dad was a CPA. I worked with real estate syndicators. Who's heard of Marcus and Millichap? You think it's a hard place to get hired at 22? I was, at that time, the youngest person they ever hired. Chris Hansen, the manager in Palo Alto, told me, we will never hire you. After I got referred back into him by my dad's clients four times, he said, fine. You find one of the senior agents to hire you for free for 60 days, and if we think you're, you're going to make it, we'll put you in our class. I work for 60 days. I'm telling my parents after graduating from Northwestern, I'm working for free, but they're going to hire me eventually. Ended up working there, rookie of the year, my first year, and did that until the market crashed. And what Gene doesn't know about when I came to shadow him, all I had took was classes. I'd never done anything in the residential real estate business at Keller Williams. These guys in South Florida that own these offices and were starting more said, we think you'd make a good team leader. Don's going to be chuckling at this. They're like, we don't care if you don't speak Portuguese or Spanish. We think you can do this. I'm like, you know what? I better go talk to Gene. I've never run a recruiting appointment, never done the job. And I walked out of there and I said, Gene, I've got what I need now. I took an office from 75 agents to almost 300. He called me six minutes in. He goes, how's it going? I said, I don't know. I looked at the rankings. I'm number six in the country in six months. All I'm doing is what you taught me. So think about the room and the organization and who you can learn from. I was floored when he told me, nobody comes to see me. How many people at EXP would help you, and you're not asking for help. How bad do you want it? So I've got 1,920 people in my organization. Sounds impressive. How bad do you want it? Gene finally got me to say yes. I'm one of the original people that turned him down. Mine was for Thank personal you. reasons. I was going through a divorce and had a number of other challenges. My ex-wife was a team leader from Keller Williams. Didn't want to bring all that into EXP. I, sort, I sorted all that out, and I joined. Ten days in, 47 agent brokerage conversion. They didn't even know how to do them in Oregon. Nine days afterwards, they left. Who remembers, it's been around for a while, what was going on with onboarding, KV Corp provisioning. Gene and I had Jason Guessing and all sorts of people helping. And the broker finally went, we can't do this. I'm going to lose every one of my agents. 
I'm 10 days, or actually less than 15 days in the business. I was at 50 agents, I went back to three. How bad do you want it? Gene and I are meeting with people left and right in Central Texas. A very good friend of mine, Chris, said, I'll meet with you. Gene and I went and met with him. Had two great meetings, and he's like, I can't come. I have other corporate responsibilities. I can't do it. I'm like, okay. So then I follow up with Chris again. He said, well, I got something for you. I don't know if you want it. He is pretty tough to deal with. I think you and Gene can probably do something with this. It was Tim and Julie Harris. And if you, those of you who know Tim Harris know, uh, difficult, hard charging, a tough nut would be probably a nice way to put it. So Gene and I drive up to Georgetown. Gene remembers this. We're in this meeting and beat the crap out of us would probably be a good way to put it. We're driving back in the car. Gene goes, God bless you. If you can figure out how to close these people, they'll be great, but I don't know how you do this. I said, I got a plan. I'm going to march them through the process. I'm going to help them understand the model. They told us they'd probably talked to 10 people and they were unimpressed. And I took them through a due diligence process. And they finally said yes. So how bad do you want it? Tim told me we're going to open this up to our coaching clients and our coaches. I need you to do all the heavy lifting. I'm like, well, what does that mean? We only know the basics of eXp. We're brand new. You need to be ready. In 30 days, we converted 47 agents. What did that look like? My wife said to me, what happened? Because I went from running five conversations a day to 12 to 15. I was on the phone all day long with some tough people. Why is this important? 1920 sounds great. It was one person, or two of them, Tim and Julie. About three weeks into it, he said, if you thought I was tough, I got a better one for you. I do not think you can make this happen because of the family, but I have got Sean Kokoska to say yes to a meeting. I'm not going because I think it's a waste of time. You go meet with him and see what you can do with it. So I, I just, how bad do you want it? How long do you prepare for a meeting? I spent a bunch of time preparing to meet with Sean and thinking through the process. How are we going to do this? Why would he say yes? What's in it for Sean? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I'm going to tie it down. Thank you, Brent. If you know KW Maps, everybody heard of that? Gary Keller hired Sean's mom and Tony DeCello to run Maps. Sean was the president of Maps at Keller Williams. He was often had his own coaching company. So what was interesting is, along what we heard today, Sean told me in the very first meeting, I am so glad you went through this with me. I have never seen the model. Never seen the model. I said, well, based on what you've seen, do you want to take this to the next step and schedule the next couple of meetings so we can talk about this? He said, absolutely. I'm intrigued enough. I want to look at this. I think this could be a good fit. And I challenged him. I said, well, how are we going to get this past Diana, your mom, and Tony? Do you, what do you think is going to happen at Keller Williams if you announce you're coming? So we were able to actually map out a plan with no expectation that he was actually going to come just so he could complete the due diligence. And we did that all throughout the process. We actually delayed him by five months so that his mom could actually negotiate her exit contract to leave MAPS and retire because of the amount of problems that it would cause. And Sean was very, very diligent about what he was doing. And he finally said yes. So you think about one person you may call that can have a huge difference. 
I got one other story, and then I'll give you some of my key points. I went to meet with a loan officer in Austin, Texas, a good friend of mine. She said, my boss from the mortgage company is coming into town. His name is Eric Orland. And he said, he wants to meet some of the key people in the market that are tied into the real estate business. This was the meeting from hell. How bad do you want it? He was from the Northeast and abusive. He is a hard-charging guy. He's a very good friend of mine at this point. But literally, she called me almost in tears after this meeting because he went in. Everybody has called me. He's a national sales trainer about EXP. I've heard it. I know it. You know what we discovered just having a great high-minded conversation? He didn't know the model. Are you doing the right process? Are you explaining to people this in the right manner so that they actually understand it? Or are you just showing up and throwing up about EXP? About 18 months after that meeting, she called me in tears. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that to you. Gene and I are driving after Kurz's launch with his top people. Eric calls and said, you're not going to believe this. I need to talk to you and Gene. What do you think he wanted to say? I think I'm going to join EXP. You need to basically be in the game and not give up on people. He came in, he hit the ground running, and about three or four months into it, he said, I've got this top coach in South Florida, do you think I should call him? Well, people that ask me that question in my organization have learned the answer is always yes. <laughs> he didn't call me and ask me that anymore. He said, I'm new enough to this. What happens if he says yes? I said, don't worry about it. Gene and I will take care of the process for you. Use your organization. Help people succeed. He didn't know enough to do something with an organization that in the Latino and Hispanic community is as big as Mike Ferry is globally. That is the reputation this business had. He said, I'm just going to call him. If I can get him to say yes, I'm throwing over the fence to you and Gene. You guys figure it out. Are you doing the right thing in terms of figuring out how to succeed? Eric has 1,400 people in his organization and will pass me this year. How much value are you creating for your people? Are you able to do it? You guys heard the story of David Kurz. I knew by reputation I could not just go into his office and say, let me tell you about EXP. Because I didn't have a relationship with him. By the time we built that relationship, we've been through some hard times together. He knows he can call me for any kind of help at this point. He wasn't ready for me to ask him that. Now, he was later. He finally was like, I need to know the model. I need to understand why all these people that I respect are moving over to EXP. So again, how bad do you want it? So let's, there's a lot of things that have been thrown out here that I want to tie down. Brent taught me, don't chase people. Some of the worst people you'll have in your organization, it's kind of like a bad seller, are people that you absolutely over convince to join. They get in, they feel like they've been sold something, and they become a seller servicing problem, except for it's an agent. So don't do that. I've done it a couple times. We all make that mistake. And then it's like, how am I going to unwind this? How am I going to actually fix this so that I don't have to deal with this every day? And thankfully, a lot of them will end up leaving. So are you adding enough value in terms of what you're doing so you can actually have a big enough funnel? We teach people this in the real estate business. Do you have enough prospects? So you can say no to people. Do you have enough prospect agents, brokerages, and others so that if it's not a good fit, you're not trying to make it a good fit? So in my case, how bad do you want it is, if I had not done the Tim and Julie thing correctly, not helped Sean understand it, not helped Eric or David Kurz, my 1900 might be 300. 150. Who knows how small it would be? 
So you are absolutely that close to be able to do this. Couple things, we've danced around the topic of edification and other things. The best book, and I got this from Jay Kinder's mastermind, because Brian Carruthers was actually there, is Building an Empire. Who's read that book in here? It should be 100% of you. Your leaders should get this. Everybody in your organization needs to actually embrace this. Watch the Stacy Council video on edification. I learned this from Gene a long time ago. If you get somebody on a three-way call and it's not done right, there's not a lot of value, right? You know, they, they could show up and you're like, oh, here's Gene. They don't know who Gene is. So you want to make sure you do this correctly. Don't make this overly complicated. Are you having the right number of conversations? Don wants you to have two. Well, Gene pushes me harder. He wants me to have five a day. And I did that for a long, long time. And it pays off. You also need to be looking down your organization to figure out who you can help. And it's not always the people like a national coach or a former team leader. It's somebody that wants it bad enough. Again, help them achieve. What did I do with Eric Orland? This is another big tip. Sometimes there's a better sponsor for them. He didn't understand EXP. He's a national sales trainer. He hadn't been a big producer in a long time. So I teamed him up with Sean. They still give me a hard time about that. Why didn't you sponsor Eric? He was going to need way too much assistance. So I elected with a conversation with him and Sean to put him under Sean. Are you doing the right thing for people? Don will remember this. When he finally joined, I called to congratulate him. He didn't pick me as, my, as a sponsor. But I was excited as could be that he joined. Are you doing that and have that by reputation? So a big part of this is how bad do you want it? And are you doing the activities in a manner that will cause you to get a return for what you're doing? Or are you just kind of going through the motions? It's easy to look at the big numbers. And that was one of the big things that I looked at was when I came in with Gene is, how are people really doing this? And again and again, you hear the three to five leader thing. But then people want to go out and just hunt whales and leaders. And that is not a good strategy by itself. It should be in combination. Because you don't know when somebody's going to show up. You don't know when that key person is. I'm sure you've seen this, Don.